Here we go. What is up, boys? Welcome to the Okiru Podcast. Today we're doing a collab with the family from Lace Kicks, and we are joined by some of the newest members. If you guys like to introduce yourselves, who's going first? <laughs> hey. yeah, Josh, today. How are you guys? I'm Josh from Sneaker Genius. Nice. Um, I won't, won't chew too much of Europe. We are doing customs and stuff for Australia. A lot of repairs, customs, bespoke, um, importing US stuff to sell to other customizers as well. And trying to push that kind of scene forward for Australia. Nice. That's awesome, man. Who's next? Hey, I'll go uh, next. Okay. Yeah, JP, you're the first. You go, man. Okay, cool. Uh, I'm JP. I am one half of the Lace Brothers. Um, the other half is obviously Stephen, who will introduce himself <laughs> in a second. Um, but yeah, I'm just a sneaker enthusiast. Um, love everything sneaker related and um, that sort of in the culture. Yeah, awesome, awesome. Yeah, I'm uh, SC Kicks, um, second half of the Lace Brothers. In the same, just just love sneakers. Um, I don't care where they're from, as long as they're real. Uh, <laughs> just put your sneakers <laughs> on your feet and wear them. You know, that's what I'm all about. And just getting to know more people in the culture and just sharing our passion. Yeah, that's it. That's it. <laughs> last but not least, yeah, last but not least, my name is Paolo. I run by Paolo Seventy Six. Um, I founded Soul Insiders back in 2012, and it's Amazing to see how far the sneaker community has come um, since those early days. And and I knew, I was telling my guys from the start, I wasn't the only one crazy enough to, to do this and is passionate about it. So this podcast shows, if anything, um, yeah, the reality of it all. And thanks for Okru and everyone for inviting me and having me today. Of course, guys. It's a blessing to have all of you on. And most especially the guy is you know saying this all up, Mr. Dr. Lace Kicks. Please introduce yourself. What's up, guys? I'll go by the name of Dr. Lace Kicks. And yes, I am the founder of Lace Kicks family. And I call that a family because we are all in one big family tree. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> no it, matter if it. you have your own brand, you know, we all rep in each other. Mm-hmm. Uh, man it's a blessing to be a part of this community as well and this is our first podcast with so many people on so this will be very interesting um so how do we want to do this guys like i think know, we, should we, we should start with josh we should yeah? start with josh yeah and then go with uh steven and then kick to jp yeah. and then you go go to soul insider go me and then you let's go then go let's go. go again so what what, is, what are we doing are we just like sharing our oh no, you're, you're more welcome to uh ask about anything Mm. So just questions for the group. Mm. All right, Maybe. easy. Let's go. Let's do it. Yeah, man. <laughs> uh, no, congratulations. Nice one. First podcast and everything. That's really awesome. What's yeah. everyone's, what's, every, how does everyone see the sneaker scene in Australia in the next five years? Wow. Does anyone want to chime in on that? <laughs> <laughs> So I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty know you have something on this. <clears throat> um, sneaker scene. For me, I probably don't see as much as the sneaker scene. I'm based, you know, north of Brizzy on, in Queensland and <clears throat> we don't have much of that sneaker scene of the actual getting together kind of thing or seeing other people with, with sneakers on. Most of my sneaker scene is done on social media. Mm-hmm. Um, and it depends which aspect you're talking about. Are we talking about? the community are we talking about how we're going to obtain sneakers are we talking about what sneakers are going to be popular i think um it's such a dynamic thing isn't it if you look back five years ago is it too much different to it is today or Mm. you know now most most things are run socially or you know by by the internet everyone's copying sneakers via the internet you're meeting people via the internet now i think covid put a big dampener on um on the personals Mm connection yes. this is why this is now it's it's great isn't it we actually get to talk to people um and, and especially about our passion hopefully in the next five years we can start getting together as, as humans again and and having interactions and and meeting other sneakerheads on personal levels um as far as copying sneakers i've got no idea how bad it's going to get um kids are getting smarter i'm got i can barely log onto this zoom meeting let alone try and bought a pair of sneakers you know <laughs> it's i think it's anyone's guess where where that's mm. gonna go 
I think um, if more people can start building their personal likes and interests in sneakers as opposed to following like sheep, um, there'll be enough love to go around no matter what happens. But yeah. I don't know how, how long's a bit of spring you could answer that question for the next five years. <laughs> that's true, that's true. <laughs> yeah, that's my insight. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I'll go next. Mm. Um, for me, I really hope that the manufacturers really saturate the market and give mm. enough pairs for everybody. Um, for my point of view at the moment, I feel that Australia is really unloved at the moment by companies like Nike and obviously Yeezy and other ones. And it's just really, like I guess, disappointing. Um, everybody blames everybody buying pairs and bots and all that sort of stuff. But I feel that it's just supply chain and, and there really needs to be more pairs for everybody. Um, yeah. I know it's not, there, there will be always hyped collaborations, which are going to be hard to get, but mm. you shouldn't have mm. trouble walking into like a Nike store and picking up a like pair of like say J fours or whatever. And, and having to worry like that, you're not going to get a pair that you were like, you will love. Yeah. So that, that's my point of view. Um, I really hope that happens and you can see it with some models already. Um, Jordan one highs are already like saturating the market and they're sitting. So hopefully other models happen the same way. I think dunks will go that way um, and people will forget about them. And then there'll be another sort of crazed pair. Yeah. I'll, I'll chime in really quickly. Um, far from being a, a godfather or anything, I've been around for a while, um, seen lots of trends and, and things so forth from back in the days when we used to camp back in the days when internet wasn't even a thing. And if you wanted something, you had to either have connections, family overseas or whatever for sneakers to the crazy, crazy, crazy ways of how we cop today. I think if anything today, we're very, very spoiled. If anything, um, mm. it's still hard, 100%. I agree with, uh, with Kicks and Craves. Australia definitely is not loved. Um, if you think about it this way, um, I've always been positioning to say look put australia and the sneaker community here on the map because um yeah we don't get the attention that we deserve um <clears throat> as a community um but just think of, this is the this is the main reason guys to be honest fashion wise we are ahead and behind so in that sense we are ahead of everybody um season wise um but we're behind in releases mm. so in the us um and milan or wherever in europe all the northern hemisphere and everything is like their winter so all of their styles summer winter and that we're way ahead us in new zealand we're like like for the future <laughs> so yeah. we're in the future right so if anything we could legit to in my eyes in the next five years sneakers wise right not that we have the the factories or you know the, the ability to to create the supply but we could be like legit trendsetters man like people in mm -hmm. europe and the us would be like oh these are the kind of stuff that we like in Jordan 1s and stuff. I go, dude, I saw that last month, you know, an idea from, you know, from Sneaker Genius. Or I saw mm -hmm. that um, on a podcast from Akira. And these guys are talking about it already. And, you know, mm -hmm. all of a sudden these ideas and we're collaborating. So imagine the community actually getting smaller in a sense of because the internet's made everything smaller. So mm -hmm. if we have connections like, dude, let's just say the, there's a massive... Um, customizing collaboration is for example like what happened um, with um sean witherspoon let's say mm -hmm. mikey came down to australia and you know sneaker genius wins he has like a, a sneaker made by nike and yeah. australia comes first oh wow yeah. so i'm just thinking in that sense it can happen australia can 100 percent get into you know the sneaker map mm -hmm. if you will of the, of the world but at the moment yeah 100 percent. i agree i'm crazy we are mm -hmm. like in the back of their minds in regards to yeah it's kind of like for example i was talking to um to josh the other day about the release of this watch the moon watch it's like oh yeah it was you know one you store. <laughs> no no but i was just saying in, in a sense of australia and releases one store per city um you know so if there was a release for sneakers it'd be like one you know it'd, it'd be like house of hoops in one in sydney one in melbourne mm. And that's all we get, 20 pairs. Like, come mm. on, we're yeah. a whole country, <laughs> not yeah. just like a city and what, 20 pairs per city. And, mm -hmm. you know, what are you going to do, fly to Perth to line up? <laughs> I, I don't know, yeah. like back in the day. But now it's all what raffles. So I'll give my last point. I think in five years, 100%, there is 100% um, ways we can improve and be put mm. on the sneaker map. And, and the only way we can do that is through 
um, voicing opinions on platforms such as this. Yeah. You know, yes. speaking with yeah. you guys and and growing the community, and then we'll have connections in the UK, in Europe, and yeah. in US. And it's gonna start with us. Yeah, and eventually, yeah. and eventually, someone in you know in those big mar- big marketing departments or companies will take notice and like, hey, these guys, you know, they're legit sneaker connectors. Mm-hmm. I'm just looking, you know, I'm looking at backgrounds of you guys, and I'm like, damn. <laughs> You know, I'm looking at the heat behind these, you know, behind these guys. I, I, I don't have heat. I'm on the lounge room. <laughs> I, 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 I said my, my background just, it's like a footlocker. You walk past it, it looks good. Just don't come inside. <laughs> but yeah, oh, for me, I'll let someone else yeah. have a go. Well, I think for me, pretty much you've said everything. I'll learn that it's going to start with us. Then I think. You know, if someone did hear what we're talking about, it'll make sense. But in five years, I think, yes, the game will change and for the better because there's pretty much every day there's there's a release, right? Every week. So what do you guys think in like two years? I think there's going to be three pairs that's going to release every week since. You know what I mean? And that's crazy because when you look back back in the years, we have to wait one, what, one month each one pair. And then it goes to two pairs, and then it goes to each week. Imagine in two years or one, even next year, it could be three pairs every each week, or it could be four pairs. You know what I mean? They could push it out like that just to gain a lot of profits from you know releasing other kits. And eventually, they're all going to see. If you don't have sneakers on shelves, how are they bringing that next market of sneaker head up? Like, I know the internet's there, but there's nothing like walking in and picking up a sneaker and experiencing it. Yeah. yeah. Well, there, there's, still, there's still some, you know, dodgy, dodgy back doors. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's just lucky that we don't have them here, you know, but we do mm. have, we are fighting for bots, and that's the number one issue we have here. If we don't have them, I think it's going to be good for us. But again, you know, it is, they can't really beat the bots on the rifle. They can't really do much because every time he does upgrade every time and you can't beat the computers. And Nike are pulling back from like mom and pop stores anyway, even Foot Locker. So yeah. they're looking to just supply it by themselves right. to everyone online. Man. Yeah. And just mm. put it out of the brick and mortar and their cut. So it's more of a percentage of them. Not many people, they don't make too much markup on a pair of shoes, to be honest. Maybe like 20, 30 bucks a pair at the end of the day after all the marketing, after mm. all the expenses. Mm. So it makes sense for them to try and pocket that. But um, it's only going to hurt us all because I'm sure we all miss lining up and that that thrill of even camping out, man. Oh, I had to camp out a few nights. It was pretty crazy. Yeah. George Street. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that's... Yeah. You never know where. Yeah, in five years myself, I'm interested to see where it is as well. Mm. But technology-wise, I'm interested. Depending on the meta, how that goes, mm. um, and how they incorporate tech and NFTs into actual sneakers that are on exactly. Your mm. um, and like Pella touched on about trying to get collabs here as well. So there's a few companies that have done it. There's a couple of companies that have gotten it off with New Balance and a few other guys. Um, I don't know if you guys know, you can actually go to the Nike website yourself and um, upload a design for a collaboration. But when you read in the fine print, it says, like, if the collab doesn't go through, Nike still holds the rights to be able to use this design or parts from it. Wow. So I think the key to getting those collabs is we just got to be persistent with it. Mm. So, like, for myself, if I was to do it, I'm not just going to shoot up one design and cross my fingers. I'm going to send them a design every two days until they either block me or say yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's, I make a headline. A lot of potential here for it, man. A lot of potential yeah. for it here. Um, and we have some great designers like Chase Shield down in Melbourne and whatnot, man. He is legitimate. He, mm. You would think most of his work's coming from Nike or Tinker. Wow. So. Incredible. Look, I don't barely nothing about the sneaker industry i just love the culture like it was so expensive for me to get into it so i just love looking at it and just knowing information about it but you know just to listen to you guys and to hear all your experiences it's like you really miss the experience of just being physically right. there. <laughs> yeah exactly right that's what you guys miss and well like, you know we can all have that we can all have that by just not trying to pop shoes i mean 
what, what we're doing now is it's just the same thing, you know what I mean? Yeah. So this is what I'm trying to get with everyone. Just get together, you know, speak out, share mm. things with each other, share ideas. I mean, mm. it's 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 not it's not that it's not as bad as you think. It's, yeah. it's quite good when you actually do do this quite a lot, you know what I mean? Like you get you get of ideas of each other without mm. hurting each other's feelings, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. You know, well what has tainted that sneaker culture if, if there has you know like I, I don't know like well, what what I guess for any new people coming into this industry or this culture like what what tips and advice would you got you guys like bestow upon them what would you share for the first person like buy what you like fresh? buy what you like buy what you like that's that's my um, and don't listen that's... to no one <laughs> don't be don't be a sneaker sheep. Com- buy what's comfortable. <laughs> mm. Yeah. And yeah. I'll say um wear your shoes. Wear your yeah, shoes. Definitely. <laughs> definitely. More longevity. Um so th- you might open it 10 years from now and it's not crumbled mm. in the box. You get another 10 years after it. Yeah. Still just by even wearing it. Yeah. And don't feel like you need to actually catch up on other people's, you know, mm. do your own, like be on your own line and do your own thing. That's it. You so don't need to catch up. Yeah. So in a sense, it's like just being the individual self, like be mm. you. Be like, you, yeah. How, yeah. How, how, how about, I'll, I'll frame it in this sense. Um, Sneakerheads, we kind of, um, we see each other and it's, um, and we sort of notice what's on feet first mm. so in that sense it's kind of like your your style and personality show in your style of sneaker right mm-hmm. so if, if you let's just say for example you rock out in um some you know sv dunk powers right so they'll be bright lots of colors mm. um you know gum bottom they're a skater sneaker so that already kind of comes across in what your style is like, or if you've got an all black pair of, you know, pirate easy, pirate black easies. Okay, so he's more quiet, but he likes Kanye West, that kind of thing. It, it kind of just, it not defines you, but it starts the conversation and sneak yeah. ends, kind of, kind of get like a, a gauge and like, oh, cool. Like, you know, that's what they're into. And you know what I mean? So someone's coming along in sketches versus someone in Cullum Scumblows and Dunlop Volleys. It's like, all right, well, you know, that's your style. Hey, yeah, yeah, I got a I got a pair of volleys <laughs> in the collection. Hey, I wear I wear have others. Is, 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 is it green and gold? It better be green and gold, bro. <laughs> it is. Uh, oh, my, my, I've got a, a pair of the uh, the uh, what are the opening ceremony volleys from the last Olympics. There you go. Wow. Yeah. Oh. So. And, and just to bring up to Akira, I don't know if you saw the latest um, collaboration. Um, it's my, <laughs> Nike, Nike Prestos. Hello Kitty. Just say yeah. it. Really? If you wow. see a dude, right? Hello Kitty. I'm going to get that. I'm going to oh, get that. Hey. <laughs> no way. I would see yeah, that. Legit. I would see see? that. So, you know, everyone, wow. pop culture, different things. Yeah. Wow. That's yeah. crazy. Hello like Kitty, eh? Yeah. See, well, they'll still be. So, go ahead. I was going to say, they'll still sell out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, 100%. Sure. Well, it's still, it's still part, of, part of a collection. If you think about it. Hmm. Yeah, I think it was about a decade ago, uh, Nike did release the Hello Kitty collaboration and it was super limited, like very, very limited. I think it was like a couple hundred pairs and and that's like a wow. presto, like a grail shoe for a lot of people. Mm. Um, but now they're like re-releasing a new version, which apparently I've seen pictures. It looks all right. I'd wear it. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't look too bad, hey? Like, yeah, it looks all right. Blue, yeah. That blue, blue, that blue is nice. White. It's not like it's, you know, all loud pink or yellow. It's like a nice blue with a white spot. And then and there's just dots of a white little Hello Kitty. Yeah. Like, you've, you've spent a long time <laughs> looking at this yeah. shoe, man. But you don't think it's, <laughs> it's on, on my feed, man. It's just on my feed. I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> you think it's yeah. only for girls, right? It's only for women. No, no, kitty. Uh, I'll take. No, uh, hopefully, hopefully Prestos don't. Hopefully, they just do. You know, their sizing small, medium, large, extra large. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll take I, an extra large, please. Prestos, me. <laughs> <laughs> I like the back tab. It's actual Hello Kitty face. Yeah, on. yeah. Oh my gosh! No way. <laughs> That's incredible. Do you guys, do you guys have a sample? Do you guys have a sample no. of this picture? Oh, it's so it's nice. all over Instagram. Yeah. Some you just got to start like just start liking more women's shoes and it comes up in your face. <laughs> <laughs> I can uh, I'll find it on Google and I'll share a screen it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Kitty Prestos. Yeah. That's what happens uh, when, when you stalk female sneakerheads, it just comes up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
got a, I've got a, I've got a question, right? Like, um, since we brought up uh, Weatherspoon, Sean Weatherspoon, right? What do you think about him moving to Adidas than than just sticking to Nike? If he were to stick to Nike, what do you guys thought? Me, it's business. To be honest, sorry, sorry, just jump in there. Um, to me, it's it's a business, right? Um, like look at Jeff Staple. Jeff Staple didn't just stick with Nike. Jeff Staple's mm. got Puma, and I can't remember the other brands. Um, but yeah, it's it's you know what I mean. Why why would you um hold yourself to one brand unless you're like you know Jordan brand? Then you've got ties to Nike. But yeah. even then, MJ's like moving away. He wants his own. To be honest, for a while, it was just a jump man's everywhere. There's no Nike Air Swish. And I'm glad that they brought the OG stuff back because to me, like when you're growing up, that's that's what it was, you know, rather mm-hmm. than seeing a jump man on the back, which is fine. But at the same time, it's a different, it just hits a different, I guess, it's a different vibe to me. Yeah. Yeah. Can, can I ask what are the terms that he left on? Like, did he like leave, walk away or did he like get sacked? I think he just walked away. Yeah. Because he had, he had, uh, he, had he, he was still on the contract, I think. And he but just, he, had a, he just, yeah, he just decided to sign with Adidas, pretty much. Well, he had a gel light after the the Nike, and then he went to Adidas. Yeah. So, Yo, so that I gel light's that, nice too. I think he had one more pair of shoes or something to, to go with Nike or with Asics. Yeah, with Nike, but he just left. Oh, okay. Well, it, it's odd, isn't it? Like Nike's obviously going to pay well, but he feels like he wanted to get his personal brand out at the same time and mm. if you're a, a designer like I know if, if that was me in his shoes I'd want to have my name on all different sneakers because only the guys that want Nike are going to put on the, like, they're nice shoes they're 97 ones a beautiful technique we designed them so well but why can't he put that into an Adidas and have the Adidas guys have it put that into a New Balance and have the New Balance guys look like you know <clears throat> like he wants to, to spread that love um, we might see him on, on another pair, you know. You've got Nike, uh, Asics, uh, Adidas now. The Adidas just sit. I keep looking at them on end and go, hey, I might just get a pair because of that design in them. Like, it's it's just nice and it's different. And if that was a Nike, would it be just sold out? And mm. is the accessibility to it not there? You know, mm. but you never know personal reasons, do you? Do you think if it was a collaboration with like Yeezy with Kanye, if it would actually sell out or if it'd be sitting on shelves? That's another question. I wouldn't sell out. You'd sell out. You <laughs> <laughs> said two names and I'm ready to go sell out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no one's even seen the shoe and they're lining up. I know, up. exactly. <laughs> there, could, there could be like shit brown, green with corn on it. <laughs> you just said Kanye, you said Sean with a screen together. Look at. Oh. Yeah. Look at uh, the mm-hmm. Travis Scott stuff on, on stickers app. Is it that nice, the clothing line? Is uh, it that nice? Yet it's gone. Mm. Just because it's got Cactus Jacks on, you know. Yeah. Mm. It's so, just the hype. Who knows? It's the hype, yeah. Well, in my personal opinion, there's 100%, 100% the, the whole FOMO thing, right? So, if, mm. you know, if you're yeah. missing out. But yeah. um, also with the whole COVID thing, like, you know, you, you can't physically go to a store and buy it these days. And um, yeah, and unfortunately, not us, but like younger generations, young, even younger, like kids of people my age, just like, how do I get my hands on these? And they yeah. just, everything's online. And yeah, and if you don't get it, what do you do? So it's like StockX, resellers, and there's only no really options, unfortunately. Um, yeah, so it's yeah. So other marketplaces like is it is it Ox Street um, and Ox Novel Street, Street yeah. have popped up things like yeah. that. Trying to, I guess, play uh, open up the market and even out with um, places like StockX and um, eBay because at the moment StockX and eBay have a pretty big chunk of the um, what's the word for it? the monopoly. Um, yeah. Amazon, but yeah, Amazon's not known for you know if you wanted to cop you know some. Um, Travis Scott's or Yeezy's or something. It's, you, people just think, you know, there's others that I mentioned before, and um, I think I think for the for the better part, it is working. Having having more options for guys like us and people in the know are definitely to our advantage. Whereas back in the day, man, it was just it was eBay, and then even then, you had to adapt and learn because the, the market just got flooded with fakes and reps and things like that, and 
They're like, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, 99 bucks for Travis Scott's. Yeah, hold on. <laughs> hey, make it easy. <laughs> and it still floats around. There's still fakes everywhere, you know, yeah. even on Facebook. You know, Facebook market is flooded by fake. Because it's full of it, isn't it? If, they, if they're available from size 7 to 12 and a half for 250 bucks, <laughs> <laughs> don't go near them. That's why we're lucky we got stocks too, you know? Yeah. Just saying that. How can people avoid, you know, potentially getting faked out on something? Like, is there any um, places where people can go to to get things legit checked that's trustworthy? You can call Paolo. Yes. <laughs> hey, Paolo, I'm coming to hit you up, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't want to jump in again, but 100, there are Facebook groups out there, guys. Mm, don't be afraid. Most most of the Facebook groups, you know, they don't buy, especially side insiders. Not unless you ask. It's extra. Yeah, if you need help with anything whatsoever, man, where you know, hit me up or yeah, if I can help. But 100, bro, I don't, I don't um claim to know everything. Yeah. I'm, I'm not some guru i i can help you with what i can help you with basically yeah. if i have it and mm. i've got it i can legit check but even then i don't work for nike <laughs> i'm not I Kanye think, west so. yeah. <laughs> like when you're talking about facebook groups the other bit is the com- the community's um interaction with one another if they know each other they know the legit seller they know somebody they, yeah, they're saying they bought it from nike or they say they got it from sneakers that you know that person they build that trust and that reputation and i think yeah. reputation goes further like you watch a lot of a lot of new guys buying sneakers off, off facebook and it's oh can i get a legit check on this guy and you're looking at it and you go mate this guy's been selling sneakers on here for 10 years you know but because it's their first comp they don't know that yeah but the community yeah. will always jump behind a good person and go yeah. that person's 100 percent, you know safe to bank with safe to just, that's the risk you take you know you're putting yeah. big chunks of money in yep. someone else's bank account for a piece of leather and some shoestrings mm, yeah yeah, you, it's 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 a lot of risk over reward, but um, the community community's the best thing we've got. Mm. Yeah, mm. but but also you know you've got your basic you know things you do to protect yourself. So it could yeah. be, I'm yeah. just gonna give you a heads up. Like yeah. most of my deals happen at McDonald's. Um, there's, <laughs> McDonald's. There's, there's, yeah, there's, there's <laughs> have a meal. Get some. Food. I want to give. I want to give a shout out to McDonald's. Yeah, <laughs> We could, get, we could get a promotion from McDonald's, see? All the notches. You could get all set with, with cheeky thick shakes next time. Well. <laughs> it's, it's funny, but there's cameras everywhere. There's families there. No one's going to pull yeah. a gun on you. We're in yeah. Australia. And we're not in the US where people can pull a gun or whatever. So yeah. to me, back is an, and it's an excuse, yes, to get nuggets or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this, this I'm, I'm not gonna, comes home with a box of shoe. Shoe, shoe lies, all of this, all of that. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, oh it's a new sneaker meetup every Sunday night because that's the release of the Happy Meal. Uh, so the when, you, when you look up most of the pairs, like, yeah, that's McDonald's, that's McDonald's night, that's McDonald's <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, pretty much, yeah. Yeah, There's a couple of um, legit check check app out, apps out there. They're anywhere from like three to five bucks. You shoot through a few pics, take the insole out, send, send through some details. Um, they'll verify yes or no if they're real. They're about a 95, 98% success rate of getting it right. Um, but it'd be cool to see something like that even over here. Mm. Even like the Facebook groups just charging like a cheeky five bucks just to... Is it yeah, you're paying for your expertise and the years it's taken you to acquire that information to be able to pass that on to them. So yeah, why not? Yeah. The skill of yeah, fighting yeah. it. But at the same time, honest to be honest, right? You can do all the logistics you can. Then you really, really can tell the minute you put on your feet, it's like, where's the technology? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> why are these boom boots? What, these is, bricks? Yeah. <laughs> what is this midsole made of? Exactly. It's like, oh, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> Why is it crumbling already? <laughs> <laughs> I, I got a question for Josh for Joshua, right? Um yeah. what 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 started you with your uh with your brand and how, how did you get up there where you are now? Um just I always was a sneakerhead over the years, man, and always did like a semi-bespoke. So even as like a kid, I'd be cutting into something, finding out how it worked. <laughs> like once my Reebok pump finally died, I um <laughs> pulled it apart. Just tried figuring it out, then tried putting it back together, and I actually got it working again. 
So like when That's I was crazy. 20, so, so just, yeah. And then um, when I was 20, I studied um, fine arts and design to get into sneaker design. Nice. Then got wow. sidetracked with bills, family, immediate work, needing to pay rent, income, all that kind of stuff. So that got chucked mm. aside. Um, and then probably five years ago, just started playing around again. Um, started making a dollar out of it maybe two years ago, two and a half years ago, just mucking around with customs, um, rep- a few repairs here and there. And then did a few courses as well. So I did a few shoe courses, did the shoe surgeon course a couple of times, did a few other things. Nice. Um, just got stuck into trial and error as well, man. Like yeah. I destroyed probably 25 pairs of my own shoes before I touched anybody <laughs> else's. So like you, you, it is a, you could study all you like and whatnot, but it's a very practical type of thing. Like even just your first resoles, you might mess up the first five or eight or so. So if you get into it, just be prepared, man. That's um, with so, everything, though. That's with everything. You know, you yeah. always have to mess up just to learn yeah. from it. You know what I mean? That's right. Yeah, don't beat yourself up. See where you mm. went wrong. Take your notes um, mm. and then just try and prove from there. Yeah. But, and, um, it, so did construction for years, managed to yeah. scale it up, and then finally like, was able to scale it up to a shop. Mm. Um, talking with the guys in the community and knowing a few guys in the community needing products and stuff from the U.S., so... Instead of everyone getting slugged with shipping from the US, I imported products to be able to supply these guys cheaply and whatnot. Everyone, <laughs> um, these guys are also on uh, some of these guys, the customizers here. I have a handful on like an affiliate program, so any mm. sales that come through their fans and Insta, um, they their their customer gets a percentage off, and then they get a little kickback as well to help support. Wow. So, yeah, yeah, man. Sneaker genius. So, there you go, guys. If you, <laughs> anyone listening there, you make sure you hit them up. Yeah. Anything, yeah. Man. I might have a pair that needs to come for a holiday. <laughs> <laughs> the repairs is so self-satisfying, man. It really is. Like, let me just show you. Are you ready if I show you? Okay, yes, Carly? please. Yeah, yeah, go, go, go. No, I'm missing out. Are you not on my screen? <laughs> like, this is the this no, no, is the before. There's no yeah. after yet. Yeah, it's copyright. Oh, no, it's copyright. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's trademarks here, bro. We don't. <laughs> they are a thing of beauty. Wow. Anyone want some 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 crackers with the Swiss cheese? <laughs> <laughs> so this kind of thing. When I get this in. Everyone might bloody shit their pants, but I love it. I love it. So it's seeing it come in like this, and then when he comes up to pick him up, the look on his face, <laughs> hey, it's good as payday. Oh, mm. my gosh. Self-satisfaction is just unbelievable because no one here is really doing it, man. Except yeah. least, who wants to send that to Mr. Minute? Are you going to send your Jordans to Mr. Minute to uh, <laughs> there you go, there you go. He's just pulling one. <laughs> oh. <laughs> We're getting a sneaker showcase. <laughs> but yeah, man, I'm, I'm happy for it. I'm hungry for it. I'm loving it, man. Yeah. Every day is a blessing, to be honest. What was oh. the hardest sneaker you had to repair? Did you have any dif- any difficult ones? Um, not really the hardest, but the trickiest are like your 11. So, like if you're resolving in a, a Jordan 11, um, so. know, yeah, just because the patent leather, like it's really hard to not really hard, you just got to get like the right glue and right additives yeah. for it to really bond properly to the patent. And it's not one of those things that you just want to like tear away with with the Dremel to sand off for it to be able to stick because then any moisture will like get under there and start damaging the paint over time. And so that's for well, it's no, nah, it's nothing's really hard, man. It's like just take your time, be patient. Mm. If you mess anything up, you can always like strip it with acetone and do it again. Yeah. Mm. Wow, that's awesome. I, mm. I I studied design with the intention of going into like sneaker design. But I was like, man, like this, this is tough. Like, <laughs> so it'd be so it'd be cool to you know to hit you up and see you see more of your work, man. That's amazing. Yeah, thank you. Anytime, yeah, you sorry, can say, you, you can do like neighbor. a little mini videos. Yeah, <laughs> the neighbor just walked past then and he's flashed his feet at me. I did a pair of custom <laughs> for him with his business <laughs> logo on him then and then, and he's just flashed his shoes and he walked past the shop. Oh man, that's, that's awesome. 
And just give you a warning though, be um, if you're into high end brands, you might cry when you visit his shop. Oh really? <laughs> he's, he's chopping up, but he is a Christian deal. Oh, oh, <laughs> he's oh, chopping, oh, he's oh, chopping up. Yeah. Christian Dior. <laughs> I just thought, oh, oh, watching that video just before. No. <laughs> Oh Some of the things awesome, I get man. through awesome, here man. is amazing. <laughs> Some of the stuff I get through here is so cool, man. It's so cool. It sucks that it's got to go. I wish I could keep like 99% of it, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but when, when it leaves your store, man, it's got your stamp. So everyone knows it's come through you. Trust yeah. me. It's, yeah, your artwork is out there and it just gets out there and people will know that, yeah, Sneaker Genius, this is, yeah, where you got yeah, it from. Yeah. So it's awesome, man. I haven't had a chance to do much of what I want to do. A lot of the stuff that's on my pages is for customers, all it all is, really. So I've got my list that I want to do just keeps growing and growing. And growing. <laughs> so just keep taking those notes down. So I might have to take a couple of weeks off after a few months and just knuckle down and really start getting some customers and bespoke out yeah. that I want to do to do nice big displays for like a gallery type theme here and stuff. Mm. Mm. Nice. Awesome. That'd be dope. Yeah. Enough about me, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want to, uh, uh, I want to bring the Lace Kicks brothers into this because, like, yeah, I'm just looking at the yeah. collection, man. I'm like, how long did it take you guys to accumulate that? Like, I was talking to Stephen about <laughs> it before. We touched on it. And he, he's just got back into the sneaker game recently. So what about you, Kicks and Craze? Like, how long did it take you to accumulate all those sneakers, man? Um, so I've been, like, a sneakerhead since probably uh, 07 um but back then it was hard to get size 13 shoes like the ones i wanted so i was buying size 12s and i had about 20 air force ones back then and and they hurt my feet so badly because they're too small <laughs> so i i had a couple of rare ones and i just sold them all like on ebay and to friends and people who could actually wear them and enjoy them mm. um and then uh i got back into retail when i started studying again yeah. and um so this behind me is probably about three years at wow. the moment. Yeah. So try to get everything at retail, but there's also those grails, which I'm trying to get, go backwards and get them. So um, you've, got, you've yeah. got to jump in though for one, one moment. This boy has the luckiest email. I knew, I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> luckiest email in Australia. And yeah. as a raffle. Has a win. No, he works hard for it though. But you gotta show yeah. us the latest cop that that Jordan to. Yeah, is it the Indians? <laughs> yeah, the Indians. Yeah, me. Got him. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Here we go. No, actually, they're for a friend because they didn't have oh, my sorry. size. <laughs> for a friend. <laughs> yes, for, for a friend. A friend. <laughs> oh, nice. Damn. Those yeah, are nice. Oh. They are. Size so fourteen, nice perhaps. Size so ten and a half. <laughs> Oh, yes, yes, I'm the friend. I'm the friend, yes. <laughs> <laughs> They're already I'll, playing. I will DM you. <laughs> um, you need to be dropping heat. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. A lot. Um, so I've got the, like, the f- couple of ones here as well. Ooh, nice. So, yeah, so um, I need to get the yellow one for myself, um, but I'm waiting for, like, the prices to crash being a Jordan 2, and, you know, they're not as popular as 4s and 1s and stuff. So, um, yeah, so trying to get wait till that crashes a bit. But um, I'll just show that's, one more before I stop showing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> are, are, are those for a friend too? Are those for a friend? Are they 10 and a half? Are they 10 and a half? 13. Oh. Hey. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's a passion. Um, if I don't wear a pair, I, I guess like after about three or four months, I try to pass it on. Um, last year I think I won like what 120 raffles. I think it was. Jeez. Oh, <laughs> he's got a <laughs> lucky one. email. That's what he's yeah. saying. It is. You just, but it's in volume. Like you have to keep on like yeah. entering like ten websites per launch, and mm. sometimes you win like three or four pairs, and you like retail assist people and sometimes you just get one or you lose so yeah what can you do he puts um, in he puts in the raffle work yeah all right like, i didn't know half, half of well. the stores that were around until <laughs> I, I started talking to uh to julie he just yeah he's 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 dedicated to the craft of, of picking up <laughs> these sneakers <laughs> that's amazing that's amazing yeah yeah 
There is a really, like that. Sorry. Yeah, I'm really yeah. curious because I love just learning about how everyone starts. Like, what was the sneaker that got you loving, like, into sneaker culture? This is a question for Myself? Everyone. everyone. Oh, you go first. Uh, yeah. I'll just finish off. Yeah, just yeah, Reebok sure. pumps, the original Reebok nice. pumps. Um, I reckon I was like eight years old. My best mate had them, and I couldn't get them, and always wanted them. But um, yeah, I remember his friend, like his brother, pumped it up so much that it popped the, the tongue inside. <laughs> um, but yeah, that, that's what started it, and then just from there on was like Jordan, and because I'm an '80s kid, so um, yeah, watched Jordan growing up, and obviously Shaq, and all those those. Like amazing like larry johnson and stuff like that so yeah yeah that's it that i think that era that you know that 95 96 basketball sneaker does it get much better mm. like no like mine would be the this is what i remember being on seeing on court yeah, like, come across yeah. Like, yeah that's that's like my number one sneaker like you know, I just love it. Like you can just stare at it and the details and the aesthetics and the, like I don't care the colorway. I just get it in my collection. That's it. That's, it. That's I just remember seeing those on court and just and it was always watching the, the older kids wearing them because you were the younger kid and mm. you always had the big brother that had all the good shoes and all his friends had the good shoes and had to come full circle and go back. Mm. That's my that's my yeah that and then you go. Jordan 11s, Grand Hill 2s, and Air more, more up tempos. Yeah. You got I those four shoes in your collection. Oh. <laughs> that's how I, uh, that's how I started with the Pippins as well, with the jo- Air and Jordans. Jordan 7 yeah. is my favorite. It's still at mm. least my favorite. I call that a grail. My own grail. <laughs> <laughs> because you know, that's how I start I started loving shoes. Awesome. That, that's awesome. it. The grails, yeah. yeah. I think that term grail, it's um these days, it's oh, that shoe's a grail, and it just dropped. You go, well, yeah. how's it a grail? You've never even had it in your hand. You've just seen it on a website. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, it's going to be worth money, and everybody sought after it. But is it? It doesn't have meaning to you. Mm. Like, mm. And then you, didn't, you didn't just say that word. <laughs> you didn't just drop yeah. it on me, bro. Yeah, meaning. That's yeah. Meaning. 100%. What, what, yeah, exactly. Otherwise, what is it? Just a bunch of polyurethane, some new buck, you know, a bit, yeah, of, yeah. a bit of stitching here and there and a logo. Yay. Me, like you go, ask that, you ask that question, why Why do you love that sneaker? Mm. If That's the answer's up, it's mm. pretty. Like what meaning? <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm big on that. I'm big on having that meaning. I don't know. Mm. I'm, I'm different to a lot of other sneaker lovers these days. Well, we all get into it for different reasons, though, don't we? You know, if you just opened Instagram today for the first time and the first sneak you ever saw was a, a Union Jordan 2, hey, then, you know, you might love that forever because that was the one that pulled you into the game. Yeah. Mm. yeah. But, yeah, I don't know. Meaning, that's, yeah. that's it. That's the big thing. Mm. Meaning and passion when it yeah. comes to anything. I think oh, if that's sorry. not there, what's the point of doing it? Yeah, yeah exactly. No. It's okay yeah. if I saw Chloe Kardashian rocking a pair of Yeezys. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that's the one I want right there. <laughs> if you said Courtney, okay. I might have agreed with you. Oh, it's not. Oh. <laughs> Obviously, oh, I don't keep up. <laughs> I don't keep up. <laughs> Yeah, all good. See, I thought you were going to say Caitlin for a second. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, some uh, some growls are uh, unattainable. <laughs> uh, geez, not if you're an NBA player. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> oh, oh, man. I love the bad Savannah. I love the bad we, we might get bad for this. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't, man. Please don't. <laughs> we're not, we're not going to be looking up promotion from now. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Hey, Kenny, I'm, I've got Ashians. Come on. The show. I'm, I'm just going to go on a completely different tangent and just go to JP. The reason I got up before, because I, I, I saw his shirt and I said, I was in Manly tonight after I told, um, what you call, I told um, Dr. Lace Kicks I was around his area. And I saw this in a shop. Uh, a friend of mine got a Got some, and I was like, Oh, where'd you get those? But I just remember seeing JP shirt, and this is the back. Of uh, what I'm holding, 
<laughs> and I was just like, oh, dude. Hey. Uh, <laughs> I, I just got these. I was like, that's dope. These cores. So yeah, I got the box. I have this. Sh- I have this cereal full of sugar, <laughs> but I'll keep the box. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so I guess again, like you know, what gets your eye in certain places, you know, mm. convenience store. I don't know what inspires you to to get into the sneaker game. Um, so going back into that, uh, Josh was holding the said sneaker that got me into the game. That's you see it crumbling into pieces. Those are nineteen ninety nine. Um, Air Jordan 5 Fire Reds, um, which was a, not the exact same ones, but a retro. Um, but the 89 pair, the OG pair, is the one that my dad first got me um, in Blacktown Foot Locker. And ever since I got that pair, it was, yeah, the, the rest is history, as you can see behind me. It's just, <laughs> it's just building and it just, yeah, accumulated for how many years? This wasn't, yeah, yeah, yeah it took a while. <laughs> And you see the, the jerseys behind me as well, all through the 90s. Um, yeah. Nice. So, yeah, awesome. I'm, I'm, I'm an old head. So <laughs> <laughs> if you have any questions about the past, don't hesitate to ask me. I'm new. I'm just new. Yeah, sure. You sure. sure. <laughs> <laughs> when you say Blacktown Foot Locker, that's where actually I went to find my grail. So I was going past there one day and I saw the Concord was in store. I ran there, I called my mum, I'm like, mum, 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 please. <laughs> and she's like, how much is it? I tell her how much is it. She's like, you're crazy. No. <laughs> yeah. It was so expensive for her, though, for a single mum. And then um, she, by the time we went to actually pick it up, it would have been so long that they'd given them away to somebody else. Oh, no. <laughs> But they had the breads there. And then I was, so the next day I was like saying to mum, they've got the breads, they've got the bread. <laughs> like, all right, I'll come down tomorrow. Okay, she comes down tomorrow. The breads were sold out. Oh, oh no! no. Oh, I had to walk out with eleven fine oh. low breads. Oh, oh no! <laughs> That's memorable. <laughs> that shoe was so it was a Reebok pump for me as well. Also as a kid, that was the mm. thing that fired it up. But it was the Concord that mm. just solidified everything. That yeah. was it for me. That was it. Game over. There was nothing. There's been nothing after that. Before that. Um, anything after that again would be think of. <laughs> so like your threes and whatnot. But yeah, man, that's it for me. Just the shape, the design, um, the aesthetics of it, everything. Mm. It's crazy. Love it. What about you, Dr. Lace Kicks? The man. Oh, that's the it. I've kicks. pretty much I've said that oh, Jordan, Jordan 7. Jordan 7, the Jordan yeah. 7, right? And the guess, Pippins, pretty much. Oh, yeah. the Pippins. I guess mine was the Converse weapons i think they're called yep. like we we're in philippines and my mm-hmm. dad was like i want to get you some shoes like pick these shoes i was like oh my god i fell in love with them there was like a green and red like christmas colorway or something like that i was like mm-hmm. that just rock them every day nice. and that was like man i love i just love sneakers now but they're so expensive like i can't i can't buy that shit until <laughs> until later down in life maybe Wait. until i get a collection like you guys <laughs> well uh, for me i gotta say something with the collection right for me that's not really you don't need much sneakers mm. right that well that's just for me right i think what counts is your actual passion about it mm. you know what i mean and you know you, you don't need much to to be in the sneaker game you know what i mean and i think people these days the new heads that's what they're going to look at you mm. you are accepted you don't need to actually have so many shoes just to just to comment on something just to be active on something, you know what I mean? That, you know, that's where I'm coming up with the prospect where you're marketing, like everybody's welcome, new ones, you know what I mean? Because we got to pass it on to the new generation. Mm. We got to learn that in a way, you know what I mean? Or else they could never be able to have a turn to speak out, right? That's it. That's it. I love that. I think that's a good way to end this podcast as well with those, those wise words as well, man. And, mm. you know, it would be great to have you guys on and talk more about this sneaker culture and really build this community again. Um, you know, you guys were talking about a lot about coming together and doing more for the community. I think this is a great way to do it as well. Just through having these discussions and just talking mm-hmm. about experiences and the wise, uh, the wisdom that we've learned through the years in the culture. Right. Mm. Yeah. yeah, definitely. It'll be good to have you guys on. If you guys are down again, you know, just Absolutely. Like, just break it down for sure, like how we can do more for the community as well. 
Mm. Same, <laughs> same the other way, man. Like I'd love to have you on our show when we get yeah. it up and running and talk about, you know, building up the business, then building up, you, you know, from design process all the way mm. through to getting a product out there. I think yeah. um, there's not enough of that information out there for, uh, for kids that are coming up. You know, awesome. we got to support yeah. each other. Exactly. It's got to, you know, it's got to start with something. You know, mm-hmm. it's got to start. With, and I think what we're doing now is actually good because we're setting up uh, a sample of things of how we're getting on together and just, you know, bringing up opinions and bringing up their thoughts. It will help a lot in the future. You know, mm-hmm. instead of pushing, pushing back all this new generation that's coming up, instead of learning from us, we're pushing them away. You know what I mean? Yeah. So this kind of give give them a credit to come in again. Mm. Accept it. Mm. Yeah, that's it. Um, anyway, oh yeah, continue. I, I, I'm sorry. I just wanted to jump in really, really quickly. I think, um, you know, to kind of phrase, put my money where my mouth is. Um, so when I spoke prior in regards to you know speaking and building about the, building the sneaker community, COVID's allowed us, uh, I think, to get together a little bit more. Mm. So um, unfortunately, <laughs> May 14, May 14, I'm looking to do something in Sydney. So keep an eye out, guys. The invite, a flyer will, will come out. Um, yeah. I have a show as well tomorrow night, which um, you guys are definitely invited. Um, Thank you. There'll be a show tomorrow night, um, but there'll be um, other platforms like they, they have, the Lace Brothers have a show. I'll have a show um, going forward as well. And you guys, everyone here in this forum is definitely invited. Um, but that said, also, May 14, um, it's, we're calling it Sneakers Only. It's a Sneakers Night Out. Um, I'll send a flyer out to you guys. Um, what we're planning to do is get together, um, get all the sneakerheads together in, in Sydney. Unfortunately, if we could have Brizzy as well, brother, we'd have you there. Um, <laughs> you know, we've got guys from Melbourne who are keen as well to come up. But we'll start small. And eventually, yeah. if we could definitely do a larger, you know, get together. Yeah. Mm. Um, but at the moment, May 14. Saturday night, keep an eye out, save the date. I'll send flyers out to everyone. You'll see it on my feed on Instagram on Soul and yeah. Size. That yeah, May 14, sneakers only, sneakers night out. Just give you guys a bit. Awesome. Awesome. Perfect. Sweet. Thank you and congrats to everyone for what you're doing for pushing everything forward as well, man. Everyone's doing the right thing, making the right moves, good decisions. Stay persistent and let's all get it. Let's yes. all get it. Yeah. Yeah. And you, you got to come back. you got to come back <laughs> oh, in. You're part of this now. Yeah. <laughs> You're part of this. <laughs> You're not escaping this crew. <laughs> That's it. I got, I, got a, I got a pair of fives that needs to slide straight to your DMs after this, man. <laughs> oh, here we go. <laughs> but, um, do you, do you want to promote, you promote your business, Josh, before mm. everything? Before we uh, end? Yeah, yeah, so we're Sneaker Genius. We're online at sneakergenius.com.au. Um, shop runs 83 Canterbury Road, Canterbury. So in a west, it's like on the cusp of Marrickville, Dully Hill, Canterbury. Um, pretty central to everywhere. So like we're highly central. Parramatta's maybe 20 away. City's 15, 20 away. Bankstown's 20 away. So it's local, man. Um, send your stuff in. We accept deliveries. <laughs> if you're in Perth, <laughs> shoot it over. <laughs> That's but uh, I'd like to say keep an eye out for big things coming from our Australian customizers as well. So we've got some heavy hitters in the game. There we go. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> international moves, then. So That'd really awesome. excited for what's going That'd on. Be dope. Awesome. Amazing. amazing. All right, guys. Boys, Thank you so you want, much. You want to oh, say anything, you, boys? Yeah. Do you want to add anything? <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. Add in your tags and stuff, like where mm. people can follow you. Any you shouts too. you want to do? SC Kicks and Kicks and Craze. S- SC Kicks, jump on, have a look at my feed. I try and keep it updated uh, weekly if I can, depending on what shoes are in the rotation. Um, but, <laughs> yeah, the Lace Boys, that's where we're going to be at. Um, and hopefully we can just open up to the community and um, get everyone talking. Yeah. Yeah. Just uh, sharing and supporting. That's what we're about. Awesome. Yep, and mine's Kicks underscore and Craze. Um, so you can check us out at the Lace Brothers. Um, we've got our email address there if you want to hit us up or PM us. Uh, we're more than happy to get you guys on the show when, when we're up like a bit more active. But yeah, yeah, we're looking forward to seeing big things happen in the future with everything. So that's good. Awesome. All right, guys. And I want to say thank you all very much. And let's do this again. Yeah. Yes. I'm just no, escaping this. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do this again, guys. 100%. All right, so see you guys on the next episode, yeah?
Yes. Yeah. Thank you guys Thanks for guys. joining in. See you, Thank you guys for taking the time. Good night. Enjoy your lovely Good night, Australia. Peace, Peace out. Peace, Peace out, guys.